Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hey, Laura, how are you? Hey, Roz. Nice to Uh, see you. uh, Nice to see you too. Um, We uh, have a fun topic today, don't we? Mm -hmm. We're going to be diving into how to share your art and how to get your art out into the world. But this is a follow-up from one of our previous episodes. Yeah, it is. It's a follow-up from episode 40, uh, our five ingredients. um, If you're wanting to like step up things in your creative practice. Yeah, so, so we yeah. laid out five different sort of elements there or in- ingredients and this one is the second one so mm-hmm. sharing it and getting it out into the world who do you think this episode is for you know like if you think of our audience because we have a range of listeners right hi listeners by the way um <laughs> we have a range of listeners at different sort of stages I suppose in their art lives who do you think this particular episode is best suited for I think it's for someone, um, yeah, that's wanting to like expand their reach, find new buyers or more wanting more eyes on their work. So sort of going from hobby to into a business. And I guess there's two levels, like there's sort of that a beginner starting out phase, but then there's also like people that are wanting to ramp it up a bit more Um, because we've got some tips. And some of them, it depends like what stage or what level that um, that you're at. Um, so, yeah, I think it's for sort of, yeah, hobby emerging, beginner, and then, you know, also people that have been in this for a couple of years wanting yeah. f- to like for new ideas and things yeah, like that. Sort of- refresh things and spice things up a little bit so Mm -hmm. um yeah so I guess we got a lot of people covered with this and we plan on giving you some really practical sort of tips and things to actually put in place some quick wins um so you can turn up that dial and get your art out in front of new people and new eyes um I'm sort of thinking back to like why it's important to do this why is it important to share your art um and I've got a couple of reasons that I have sort of fleshed out so um and and Laura's going to debate with me we're going to have a debate (laughs) what team are you on is it affirmative or negative I I don't know I don't know if it's a debate Rose (laughs) oh I know we're just but we're going to discuss how's that Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right so um I have You might share your work um, more publicly because you want to find your ideal collector or your buyers. Mm -hmm. You might share your work publicly because you want to find community um, and like build a network of other creatives and sort of, yeah, build your net net, net network of beautiful. Yeah, even like business contacts and just that sort of exposure piece. Yeah, yeah. And then you might also want to use it as a way to practice talking about your art, because I feel like a lot of creatives are quite introverted, not everyone, Mm. but a Mm -hmm. lot of creatives, I feel maybe introverted, maybe not used to speaking up. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think it's good practice in having to write some words and around your art. Yeah. Yeah building that confidence Mm. around yeah discussing what your art is about Mm. and what your practice means to you and all that sort of stuff yeah and that's hard I'm not very good at it myself in like if I'm super open here so (laughs) it's really good to have avenues to practice that because that's the only way you get better at anything right yeah I think it takes time doesn't it yeah, for sure. Mm. And I think mm-hmm. you need to have that um, people to people who are willing to listen mm-hmm. in a loving way. Mm. You know? And you need to feel safe as well, don't you, to be able to share yeah. all the bits and pieces yeah. of your art. So now, having people around you to like discuss that with as well, like mm. discuss dis- different aspects of your art. 
Mm. That's really helpful. So the community is a good piece. Mm. Then another possibly unexpected benefit that of sharing your art on social media and through email marketing and other places as well is um, h- how those platforms and that you're sharing can sort of provide social proof for future opportunities. Mm, that's we a would, good one. Yeah, we would sort of talked about it before. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean. Yeah, well, it's just you're out there, you're taking your art seriously. Um, yeah, you value your practice. And then, yeah, you're, you're just showing potential collaborators or potential people that might want to work with you that, um, I don't know, you're serious, legitimate. Yeah, because, you know, like. And you I can was, execute. Yeah, you, you deliver. You like you, you deliver, you're, yeah. yeah and, you can, and you're trustworthy, right? So it's sort of building that social mm. proof and that trust because you think of, like, I was thinking of a new artist or an artist that has been making art for a while, for example, but has decided now to go into art licensing and so has started up an art Instagram account and then goes and contacts other, um, like, businesses and brands to see if they can get their art licensed those companies are then going to come back to that Instagram account just to check oh how serious is this person how long she been around what does she do Mm. Um, and I feel like if you have a bit of a backing there you have some content on your social media not not like a portfolio but it's it's just evidence that you're active and you're real and you're engaged and you're interested I think that really helps to get opportunities to um sort of turn into reality how's that yeah yeah, yeah definitely definitely mm. what other do you can you think of any other sort of reasons for getting your art out there um I think we're talking about it acting as a like example for others too so yeah. sort of like that encouragement or you know um expanding possibilities or just sort of I don't know this sounds weird, but like being a role model. <laughs> I don't think that's weird. I reckon like being a change maker as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I reckon it's good. Showing other people that it's okay to have the messy middle of your art process, for example. Like that's mm-hmm. okay. That's normal. Like be the person that shares that with the world and makes it, all the other creatives feel better about the fact that that does happen behind closed doors and they've felt shame that they, they've they got that messy middle that they have to work through. Yeah, we were going to talk about later in the episode like that mindset piece as well, like touching on, yeah, the importance of, um, yeah, sort of working through some mindset blocks and maybe the things that are holding you back if you are worried about putting your work out there. Yeah, definitely. So things like perfectionism and a fear of judgment and mm. a fear of being spammy, that's a good one. So mm. we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. So listen to the end um, because we really would like to help you out. Um, so that's why we think this topic is important and it's why we're mm-hmm. here today. Um, but we want to give you some practical tips and some quick wins um, for getting your art out there and sharing your art. We wanted to, how did we want to structure this? Do you remember? I think we were just going to give a whole heap of tips. <laughs> <laughs> In my brain. Know. <laughs> Because I'm the mind map junkie, right? So yeah. I've got my mind map in front of me and I'm thinking we go social media, we go email, we go website, and then other. How's that? Sure, let's riff on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so social media, what would you say for social media? Like, I feel like we have two levels here, the brand newbies that don't have any social media for their art yet, and then the artists that already do have some social media. Yeah, I feel like most people listening probably have already, like, started their Instagram for their their art I think they're sort of in that space um whether it is like a personal like you're just on a personal account or um or you've actually got a proper like business social media presence on Facebook or Instagram or wherever you like to hang out um 
yeah, I guess, I don't know. What would your tips be? Like if people are just sharing on their personal account, um, what, what would you suggest for people that might, may not have set up their business accounts yet? Uh, I guess there's two options. So either to set up a brand new Instagram account for your art or to convert your personal one over to an art one. Um, it depends on your situation. Don't you think like whether you're a big, like whether you're a big personal family photo sharer sort of a, if you're like that, then I, I would suggest creating a brand new Instagram account for your art. Um, but if you're not like that and you just, basically use your account to check out other people's or accounts <laughs> um, <laughs> and just turn that into your art one and um, make sure you switch it over to a business profile as well so yeah so I I, I reckon we need to we, we do need Instagram hey how's that do we need Instagram as artists well we've got some other tips for things outside of social media yeah. but I feel like it's probably the easiest way like if we're talking about the topic of like sharing your art, mm. sharing the beginning stage, sharing the journey, mm. um, getting over that fear, um, that fear of being seen. I feel like social media is just the easiest way. Like we've got our smartphones, they're in our pockets. We can just whip it out and make a post. Like mm. Easy. It's easy. Yeah, yeah it is. Mm. So, yeah, I feel like, you know, if we're talking about, easy ways to to make that happen and get more eyes on your art then it's a good that's, tool that's the quickest and easiest way and I it's think. free yeah that too that's helpful okay all right free and easy hey that's nice <laughs> that's, we, should, <laughs> we should integrate that into <laughs> our like our little <laughs> intro thing <laughs> come and be free and easy with Laura yeah. and Roz like that <laughs> Okay, so, so social media, <laughs> go yeah. back, go back, wind back. And would you suggest like, okay, so let's just assume that <laughs> people are motivated now. They're like, oh, okay, I haven't set up um, an art business page on Facebook. Um, and then also like sort of thinking about maybe transitioning their personal Instagram account over to their specifically for art business. Um, so would you suggest if they kept their, their personal account, would you suggest that they share art on that too, Roz? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because, you know, your first buy is a highly likely stroke, almost definitely going to be your family and friends because they already have that know, like, and trust factor. They know you um, already and they trust you already. So they're going to be the ones that are, and they also will want to champion you too. Mm -hmm. So they're likely to be your first um, buyers firstly. And then if you tell them that what you're doing and they're seeing what you're doing, then they are going to tell other people as well. And they will start the whole word of mouth thing. So yes, 100%. And I know it's weird. Like even, even for me, sometimes like, all I want to talk about is my art, but with family in particular, I don't talk about it a whole lot because I don't know. Do you talk about your art a lot with your family? Depends who it is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got um, people in my family that get it and then mm. um, some people that are like, yeah, it's just not their world. And yeah, that's okay. That's like, yeah, yeah, that's as okay. As long as they know broadly what you're doing. Mm. then I think that's that's got to be your goal really they should mm -hmm. know what you're doing and that mm -hmm. you're making art that you're being serious about your art and that you would like to sell art I think that's important to get that message across somehow yeah mm. definitely yeah so we, what have we got we've got an Instagram account mm -hmm. um, for your art which you may or may not have transferred over from a private mm -hmm. one um, then we have setting up a Facebook page specifically mm -hmm. for your art business. Yep. And, and I recommend having the same name as well across your Instagram account and your Facebook page so that it's connected. So it might be um, Laura Day Art or, or something, but having exactly the same across them. Would you usually, usually recommend that as well, Laura? Um, I don't, mine's uh, on Facebook. It's Laura Jane Day Studio. Mm. I would suggest keep it consistent. Um, yeah, mine's not consistent. 
That's all right. I mean, we're we're modeling imperfection here, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> to be honest, like I don't hang, yeah, I don't hang out on Facebook too much. So mm. it's more Instagram for me. Mm. Um, that's where all my energy is. I guess that's probably another thing to sort of consider. Mm. Like where do you like hanging out? And like, what's the easiest thing for you to do? Yeah. Like, is it posting stories? Is it posting a video or is it taking snapshots? Like what is something that's just, yeah, you don't have barriers in place of, and you can just execute the easiest and then just keep repeating that. Um, I think we also wanted to touch on like the scheduling and showing up uh, regularly yeah, uh, I think um, you had a resource that you wanted to talk about as well with in regards to that. Yeah, so I had two two things on this one. So the first was um, to decide on your posting um, consistency. I think that's the right word. Um, mm-hmm. So how often are you going to post realistically? Okay, we've got to be realistic and consistent. So that's about deciding if it's going to be once a week and then sticking to that okay like let's not go I'm going to post three times a day every day and then fall off that because it's actually unrealistic so decide on that consistency and then um, sort out some ideas for what to share so you can either um, go and check out other people's Instagram accounts for ideas and you just look at it broadly you go oh they didn't about me post okay good yeah yeah must remember to do that once a month or you go oh they did a like a canvas turnaround oh I like that idea I can go and do that so you can have a look like research like that for ideas but then I also have a um like a uh, a month-long content idea um download for you as well if you want to go and grab that from the link down below in the show notes um or head to the link in my bio over on Instagram if you want to go and snap that one up um, just just a few ideas that will work for a lot of different artists because sometimes those ideas are hard to come by I think like if you're not feeling creative you can it, the ideas just disappear are you like mm-hmm. that do you ever face that sort of Instagram idea freeze um sometimes but what I've been implementing lately is um scheduling um through Hootsuite and I've had someone come in and like help me with that um, so I feel like, yeah, content wise, it takes time. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, if you put your mind to like wanting to improve like the content you're posting, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think, it, I think it'll eventually come to you with time, like what, what feels like the right mix. Um, yeah, but I think it's just more about doing it and making it Mm -hmm. happen like I think that's what we're sort of speaking to here Mm -hmm. is like um not worrying that it's perfect and it's more about the act of yeah done is better than perfect 100 percent, and that consistency and like sticking to the promise that you make for yourself so if Mm -hmm. it is that once a week post something once a week like literally that can be the (laughs) that can be the bar the expectation post something once a week like (laughs) and Mm. that's definitely achievable right yeah yeah Mm. and if you haven't made art in a couple of weeks and you feel like you don't have any fresh and new things post some of your inspiration or post some of your art tools or like um even just recycling like because it's so Mm fast-paced social media so just go back and recycle old art it's still valid and if you've still got work that you'd like to sell go back and um and post previous artworks yeah because actually Uh, only one percent of your audience will see any of your any one any one of your posts um that's the stat so (laughs) if you have 100 followers and you share one post one of those people will see that hmm. if you Hmm. actually look at that Um, it makes it really obvious that you can actually post way more than you think you um, feel comfortable with if if, if you're following. So you're not spammy if you um, share a lot of posts because actually Mm. most people aren't seeing it. And if you want to go and grab a previous post that you really liked, you can go and repost that and that is totally, totally within acceptable um, boundaries. Does that make sense? Yeah. (laughs) If you're um if you're posting in your feed too, don't forget to um share that to your stories. So then that's an extra tile, that's an extra impression. 
um, yeah, just to update people because sometimes people only look at stories. Yep, totally. Good point. Um, okay, social media? Mm, I think maybe just um, talking about your bio and then um, oh, yeah. adding like a D- DM to purchase or something like that. Like you need to have that call to action because this topic is all about getting eyes on your art Mm -hmm. and people need to know where to be directed. If you don't have a website yet and you can't put the link on your Instagram, uh, just, yeah, make sure people know that your work is available for sale and um, they can contact you by a private message. Yeah, and you can say DM to inquire rather than to purchase if you want to be Mm. a little bit softer with it. And then also if your works are available, put a price on it. Mm. I'm sorry, like I know that's icky, but actually it makes it easier for the person on the other end because Mm -hmm. I know for me I'm not going to ask how much something is because I'll be embarrassed if they say, and that will be $4,000 and I just can't afford it and then I don't want to um, offend the artist. So just... Put a price on it, um, start somewhere, see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also um, if our audience wants to listen to uh, another episode with us on Instagram, go and listen to episode 34 with Jade Warren from the Small Business Growth Club who dives into Instagram for artists. Yeah, great. Mm. That's good to refer people to that that one. Mm -hmm. Nearly forgot. (laughs) (laughs) um then we have email next um so email marketing I put a post in my art for the heart um Facebook group and I said I'm sorry guys I'm just gonna say it if you want to sell your art you have to have an email list and you have to email them Mm -hmm. I reckon that's true what do Mm -hmm. you think yeah I think so that's sort of been something I've been working on um, so if we're if we've already established our social channels, mm. then the next task um, or an important next step would to be to get your email list sorted and just adding an extra touch point for people to be notified of what you're up to, um, what new works are for sale, what collaborations you're doing. Yeah, just because. I guess people are busy and the more sort of ways that people can find out about your practice and your work, um, the better. Yeah, it's almost like the second tier. Like social media is your public facing, the big wide world. Um, You can sort of find people there. And then email is where people say, oh, actually, I really am interested. Here's Mm. my email address. Mm -hmm. And then you send them the emails because they want to know all the behind the scenes stuff and they want to know, be the first to know when you've got a new art collection or when you might have an art show on or when whatever is coming up. So it's almost like the two tiers, but social media is also not our turf, right? We don't own that. So yeah, emails, email is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Practical tips for that. Oh, well, we did have um, an episode with Tash Corbin. So that's a really um, informative episode. So I definitely recommend uh, listening to episode 39 on that one. But Roz, uh, what would you suggest? What are some like quick and easy things that people can do to sort of start their email marketing? Yep. So first up, collect email addresses. Um, And that can sound pretty, sounds easy, right? (laughs) But then how do I actually collect those email addresses? So you can keep it super simple and you can just have a message in your Instagram bio that says to subscribe, um, send me your email in the DMs or something like that. Or you can have on your website, if you have a website, um, a way for people to opt in and to enter their details through, for example, a pop-up, which can sound might sound a bit advanced for some of our listeners. How did you first start collecting email addresses, Laura? At events. Um, Ooh, like, yes. so, like I was running workshops and events, so I'd have um, previous workshop participants and uh, markets and I'd have like a clipboard and I'd get people to sign up. Um, and then once I set up my website, uh, I've got some digital downloads that people mm-hmm. can get. And 
yeah and then also at my exhibitions so people that purchase my work previous customers um and any additional people that wanted to be added to my list yeah, yeah good so one I'm just I'm, ways. I'm always so digital my brain often like mm-hmm. goes straight to the digital but that is so true like I had a market a little while a while back now I don't I'm not really a big market person and I had um my clipboard there to collect people's email addresses in person so that's another one just have to be careful not with the handwriting I know some people do that with an like they'll have an iPad to capture people's email addresses have you ever okay. done that Mm, no no that's no that's the next next level mm. 2.0 yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no good point so capture the email addresses and then after that you need to actually be have somewhere to keep those email addresses um and a platform so that you can email those people um, and email those email addresses. So I generally recommend MailerLite as a good free starting um, platform. The other one that's really popular is MailChimp. Have you Mm. ever used that one? I used to have MailChimp, but then now I've got my Squarespace website. I've connected it over there. Yeah, so you can connect it then also to the website. That's a good idea if you can connect actually. So then you can manage, yeah, when people purchase, for example, through your website, that yep. email address then is automatically added to your email list and you don't have to double handle it. Yeah. Stop being so smart, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did we want to share on emailing? Um, I feel like that's a good little overview. If you have any yep. questions, uh, please reach out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I, you know, all of these things is bit by bit over time. Mm. So if that seems overwhelming to you or you might have like sort of some tech barriers to overcome too, mm-hmm. I think it all it all comes with practice and like implementing bit by bit and learning as you go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I just realised I was... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, ing, the whole <laughs> way, <laughs> the whole, whole way through that. And that's something that I was apparently meant to be trained not to do. So anyway, <laughs> um, yes, no, this is very true, right? Because I think for some people, um, they'll be listening and going social media, all fine. And then email, rah, rah. do you ever have mm. that sort of like emotional response to um, certain things? Like they almost just so triggering and overwhelming immediately. And so your brain actually closes and, and won't listen. Um, sometimes, oh. but like when I, like, I guess maybe it, past Laura would have been like that about like finances and money. Yeah. Um, but I've actively made an intention that yeah. I want to improve on that. Mm. And then, yeah, so it comes easier. I think you just have to decide whether it's something that you want to like manage better or not and then gosh that- you're amazing Laura yeah. you're giving me the um you're giving me actually actually giving me goosebumps because I think it's the um yeah the what is it the willingness to reflect on how you operate mm-hmm. and to judge whether that's serving you yeah yep yep mm. Because maths was like my worst subject in school and I hated it with a passion and I really think it probably was because I didn't really like my teachers Mm. and being a creative, like the artistic stuff came really easy to me. So then that was my level of comfort. So then I carried that sort of story and um, sort of negative energy around finances and, Mm. um, yeah, managing money and even just like different stories that I work through, like I'm not responsible with money and I can't manage my money well. Mm. And then when you go into business, like you have to learn to manage your money well and be responsible with your finances and keep track and do your tax returns and all of those adult things that you have to do. So yeah, it's just about actively deciding that, okay, you know what? I am smart. I am Mm. intelligent. I can figure this out if I just put some time and attention on it and sort of uh, look for resources that can help me with that. Yeah, no, that's it. And I think, I think the reason why that's so inspirational is that, that that's, you're taking that power back 
you know, mm. and you're not letting that story and your history to carry that power and to stop you from, you know, success, achieving success, whatever success is for you. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so I think like if email marketing, for example, is doing that to you <laughs> <laughs> and if your roller door is closing, you know, <laughs> and you're, you're, alert, alert. <laughs> yeah, your alarm bells are going mm. off. Um, mm. Look at why that is. Um, look at if you it's holding you back and if it's something you want to push through and gently, you know, creep open that roller door and poke mm-hmm. your eye out and, um, and start to, you know, slowly and gently set up some email marketing perhaps. You know what I'd suggest? Mm. If that doesn't come easy to you, just ask for help. Like just find one of your friends that like, you know, maybe they have a business and they're sending good emails. Just ask them, like sit down with them, ask them how they do it um, and figure it out or uh, you could watch some YouTube videos or, yeah, just be in that learning phase. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just just ask people for help or look at other models or maybe find one of your artist or business friends that can offer some advice on how to just set it up and then get that schedule going for sending out regular content content to your audience. Beautiful. And I, that brings to mind as well the idea of um, just imagining your email marketing and thinking, what if this was, this is from another, a previous mentor of mine, what if this was simple and fun? Mm. What would this look like? What would email marketing look like for you if it was simple and fun? So maybe it's once a month only and maybe it's got fluorescent colors in it, you know, like <laughs> simple and fun, like just follow that lead. Anyway, email marketing. Next up is another one which we need to prepare you for. <laughs> Websites. Yeah. Yeah. All it right. It can be big. It, it can be big. Um, but, yeah, I think we. I think you had some good suggestions for some free or easy ways. Yes. So, so I reckon, as you're saying, it can, what did you say? It can be easy. It can be easy. Is that what you said? I said, uh, you've got some suggestions for some free, free free and easy ones. I don't know. You said something before that, but I I was just going to agree with you in that it can be easy and it can be hard. It's totally up to you how simple you want to keep it. Um, So there is that, is it square or square up? I get confused. A free. Square. Yeah. It's Square. <laughs> Just Square. Okay. So there is a free website yeah. through Square, um, which is fairly good and fairly good, like pretty as well. And it has an e com functionality mm. in there. So if you want to sell art, you can set something up on there. Um, Google Sites also has um, a free way to make some sort of a website. So that might work for you as well. Um, but I think you start small and start sort of with that boot bootstrapping model, mm-hmm. low cost. Yeah. And sort of have it in your mind that when you're making enough sales, you'll upgrade to a platform that's a paid one. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking yeah. because the paid ones are better. I think they the functionality is better. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You're yeah. with, who are you with? Squarespace. Yeah. And then I'm with um, Shopify, which I like mm-hmm. as well. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think so they website. work. Yeah. Do you I need mean, a the website? Fr- well, that's what I was thinking. I mean, mm. you can get away with just uh, Instagram, but um, it depends, yeah, what level you want to take things to, doesn't mm. it? What happens if you've got your art somewhere like um, Blue Thumb, Art Lovers, Etsy, um, there's another one called Make Make It. I make it. Don't know. I- I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> I'm going to look it know. up. Keep talking. <laughs> yeah, well, well I mean, you can gonna... get away. Like, so if you are using those third-party um, sales platforms um, or e-commerce options, you probably could just get away with your Instagram and then the external marketplaces. Obviously, they take commissions, Um but yeah, it it just depends whether you want to have control over um, the way that your art is displayed 
and how you process sales. Mm. Um, yeah. It's called madeit.com.au. Okay. Way. I haven't heard of that one. It's mm. a little bit like an Etsy, but only Australian. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I think there's different versions, isn't there? So there's the artist that just sells their work through their website. Then there's the artist that has their artwork on an external platform. Um, sorry, like, um, what were we saying? Blue thumb, sorry, got mm-hmm. to turn on my brain, those ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there's artists that have their art in galleries as well. Yeah. Retail galleries or even fine art galleries. And those, you know, websites for those sorts of artists might just be more of a gallery style website where you can't mm-hmm. click to purchase. It's just has the images of the artworks. Mm-hmm. And maybe it says, email me to inquire. And then you tell them in the email where that artwork is and through whom they can buy it. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, different versions. But website, worth it, I reckon, personally. Yeah, it is. Mm. And it goes back to the second point of the email list. It's another point where you can get people to subscribe to your email list. Yeah, beautiful. So they're the main ones. We wanted to list off a couple of extras and then to talk as well about mindset and give you some really key pointers because really big point, key points, really big pointers (laughs) because um, a lot of things do pop up when you're um, popping, getting your art out into the world, a lot of things, and they pop up for all of them, all of us, and they um, constantly pop up. So um, it's really important to be able to address those. Do you want to list some of the other ideas? Because you did a lot of research around this one, Laura. Yeah, it's just other avenues that you might want to consider when you want to get more eyes on your work and build your brand and exposure as an artist. So you could potentially reach out to other podcasts and be interviewed, or you could set up your own podcast to talk about your studio practice and your art. Um, Also attending networking events in your field. So just getting to know people in your local community or um yeah just getting out there handing out your business cards and talking about your art with with other people and networking going back to that community piece like you can get referrals and um different things like if you're out there socializing then sometimes you might be like um, front of mind and then, you know, they'll be having conversation with someone else and they'll be like, oh, well, I need to connect you to this artist. There's a community project and whatever. Like you don't know how um, it's it's going to like lead on in terms of opportunities. Um, like reaching out to people, like so maybe emailing companies, um, organisations, like other artists that you might want to collaborate with. Uh, so I was thinking like maybe, um, yeah, if you want to work with your local council um, or like brands, um, that coffee cup company you talked about in a previous episode, <laughs> I can't even remember the name. Bio cup. Bio cup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you could get your art printed on um, bio cups or like other brands, um, art licensing, those sorts of things. Um, We were talking about how Facebook, you can um, share your art on your personal page. Oh, yes. Just telling your friends and family what you're working on and what you're making and sharing that, maybe at uh, social gatherings and things like that. Uh, some people will get it, some people won't, but it's just good just to like start that ball rolling and, and sharing and talking about your art. It, it gets easier with practice. Um, and then press releases as well. So, um, we still want to do an episode on that because yeah, I'm pretty I think clueless that and you're, a good one. Yeah, yeah. you're pretty confident. So like getting featured in magazines or local local newspapers, local newspaper articles. And then I think um, there was one that I didn't write down, but like I think it's probably like events as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so different creative events, markets, expos, um, like your sort of local arts council, like, yeah, just trying to – get exposure in, in different areas, just mm-hmm. find out what different events and places that you can pop up and, and show your art in. 
Yeah, beautiful. Is there anything I've missed? Like, can you think of anything? There's so many things. I think we've done a really (laughs) good job because we've had the three key things, social media, email, website, and then a whole list of extras in there. I think there's a lot of info for our listeners. And if you are one of our beautiful listeners and you've made it this far into the episode, um, drop us a DM and let us know how this has helped you so far. We still have, we still want to cover off mindset before we wrap up. Um, but let us know how this has resonated with you and don't be afraid to leave us a review as well so five stars for good karma over on spotify and over if you're listening on apple um, you can actually log in there and leave us a proper review make sure you leave your instagram handle so that we can give you a shout out live um, in another episode and hopefully get you a couple of extra follows um yeah so mindset i reckon is next yeah So, Roz, what would you suggest to someone that's sort of worried about being spammy? Oh, (laughs) this is a good one. And I Mm. I come up against it myself, like, as well. I'm like, is this okay? Is this okay? And it always, for me, comes back to am I serving them? Am I helping them? Am I um, helping them on their journey? And if the answer is yes, then I'm good to go. Um, It is also helpful, as I was saying earlier on, to know the stats. So if you're sharing things on social media, Only 1% of your audience will see your posts. I know I said that earlier, but if you really think about that, that it gives you a lot of permission to share a lot on social media um, because you you want to be getting to as many of your followers as possible and also as many of people outside of your followers. So just share, share, share. And then also in um with the email list. Also, again, remember, go back and just remember these people gave you their email address because they want to hear more from you. And Tash Horbin in the episode episode 39 shared a really great analogy, which was inviting people to your mailing list is like inviting someone to a party. They give you their email address. That's like them saying, yes, I'll be there. And then be, your responsibility is to be a good host and be polite and email them back. <laughs> so I, I thought that was a really good analogy. So, yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's good. And then um, I guess, you know, the comparisonitis and that perfectionism in that whole social media world, I think I get caught up on that um, or previously. It's so much better now. Mm-hmm. But um sort of looking at people that are like very far progressed in their art journey and then comparing my posts and my art to them. And then that sort of has held me back previously. Um, Yeah. Have you experienced that before, Roz? Yes. Yes. But I think... (laughs) I think I'm a bit of a special unit because I reckon about maybe about a year ago, I think I made the decision just not to ever look, (laughs) not to ever look at those, you know, big accounts. Just don't spend time there. Don't just get those blinkers on and (laughs) stay in my own lane and just do my own thing and be me. And people who like what I do will follow and people who don't won't follow. And that's just that. That's good advice. Because you get to choose like what um what you consume. Mm. So Curating if you, your yeah. feed is what they say. Curate. So probably like a good tip would be um to unfollow accounts that are triggering to you and yes. that you get, you're just finding that um yeah if if that is sort of a, a mindset block or something like if you just filter filter that out but um I think lots of artists especially in their learning stages they are like looking at other artists and mm. see what they're modeling mm. and sort of they're learning about themselves they're learning about this art world they're learning how to show up and post content around their art so they are looking at other people for examples so then it comes back to self-awareness and working out why am I looking so closely at this and that artist? Is it to learn from them? How's it making me feeling, feel, sorry, is it making me feel rubbish or is it making me feel good in that it's inspiring? Mm -hmm. And then when it tips over to making you feel rubbish and you've got that comparisonitis going on, then just um, unfollow. Or I think you can also hide posts for 30 days or things like that, hide Okay. Accounts for 30 days. That's another mm. 
medium option, just if you're having a little bit of a tough phase with the comparison comparisonitis, if I can yeah. say that word. Um, yeah, that might be a good option. But I think it comes like as you grow and become more confident as an artist and confident in your style and your practice and it, you are being authentic, mm. then it doesn't matter like what other people are doing, does it? Mm. Yeah, that's exactly it. So like you were saying, you're staying in your own lane mm. and whatever you're doing is a like authentic expression of what you're doing. So, mm. yeah. It, also, it almost comes from respect from people in the profession generally as well. Mm. You know, like um, I used to be, I'm still in, very much inspired by Ange Miller, for example, but I used to be particularly inspired by her Instagram account. But the, and I still, I mean, I still am. I just am not checking it out all the time. But I think the point is that I just really respect how she is an artist. And so that then translates over to me. And I'm just going to respect how I am an artist. And I'm just going to respect how Laura is an artist. And we're just all individuals doing our own thing and putting our own magic out into the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't mean to criticize. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not criticizing Ange Miller there, just so you know. <laughs> Did it come across it, it like didn't, that? It didn't sound like that at all. Go and check her out. Give her a follow. She's gorgeous. Yeah, we interviewed her in a previous episode. We too. did. What episode was that? Does anyone know? If no, you know what know. episode it is, send us a video. Um, oh, anyway. Yeah, it's just it's the own lane, Bizzo, and having mm. respect for yourself and everyone else in the industry and just, just doing you, just do yeah. you. Yeah, I think it all just comes down to awareness. Mm -hmm. And figuring out what stories are running and if it is um, proving to be a barrier to you wanting to show up the way that you want to show up. Mm. And, yeah, I, th I think it takes time um, to really work through that stuff. Mm. So my advice would be to have some journaling sessions mm. and, like, really just start to figure out, like, why you, you're sort of feeling resistance or um, feeling like an imposter and mm. those sorts of things. Like there'll be stuff hidden under the surface, usually from like our formative years when mm. we're in like primary school or quite young and just different messages we've picked up and then we've formed that um, point of view in the world. But that can all be changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can do the the five whys as well. So mm -hmm. I feel this makes me feel icky because boom. And, mm -hmm. But why? <laughs> and it's a really deep dive, yeah. Yeah, I think it helps to talk it through with a friend too. Mm. Like for me, like I sort of decompress and I like to talk things out. Mm. That helps too. Mm. So what have we got? Perfectionism, inner critic, Spammy, imposter mm -hmm. syndrome, that's a good one. Comparisonitis. Yeah. Yep. Um, fear of judgment is the last one I've noted down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's so. a hard one as well. Just push through. Mm -hmm. Muscle it, people. Muscle. Mm -hmm. Share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Share, email, post, get it out there. Get it, <laughs> get it out of your system and it yeah. shall disappear. Come off. Done is better than perfect. Yeah. For yes. sure. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, we do want to give you just one big thing that we want you to take away, which was that looking after your mindset is just as important as all of these pieces of the puzzle, right? So it's not just about your social media. It's not just about your email, not just about your website. It's also about managing your mindset um, so that you can actually achieve what you're after in your art business and get your art out in front of a lot of additional eyeballs, yeah, that's well said, Rose. Yeah. Thanks. Mindset's key. Totally. Yeah. Um, and if you would like to grab some downloads, you may. Um, you can grab my social media guide for artists. And also Laura has a project planner, a five-week project planner. Do you want to tell everyone a bit about that and how that might um, be relevant? Yeah, you can get it at laurajaneday.com slash free. And the five-week project planner, it might be good, like if if – email marketing or your website is the next step and you want to sort of expand on those aspects in getting your work out there, then um, yeah, just writing the title of the project and then breaking it down. It, um, it's really helpful to sort of set like a bit of a plan in place. So if you're one of those people that has the um, roll, roller door going down, that <laughs> over, overwhelm, this will be absolutely perfect for you. Um, that's all. Cool. Good episode, Rose. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
I reckon we aced it. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> all right. Well, let's wrap up and we'll see you all or hear from you all. No, you'll hear from us in the next episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye.